Hey folks, Phil the Bee Man here. Uh, I'm going to voice over this video because the noise of the equipment makes it hard to hear what's going on in the shed. But I uh, thought I'd take you through my extracting system now that it's up and running. We have a deboxer that pushes the frames out of the boxes. They need to be broken apart and then thrust into the uncapper. The uncapper feeds one frame at a time through uh, the knives. So there's the feed mechanism. I'll go around to the far side and show you how the knives look when they're in action. You can see that cheese grater running back and forth, taking the cappings off. It does cut uh, down on the uh, whether it's capped or not, so you lose a little bit more wax than if you use just a straight knife. You can see some of these frames have uh, relatively little cappings. This, uh, this system works pretty good. And uh, here's the feed trough. And uh, my staff here, they both uh, monitor those frames and do a little extra scratching if, if the encapper misses anything. And they also take the uh, any extra wax or burr comb off the top of the frame so that they stack nice uh, when you put them back on the hive. It's nice to have those top bars clean. And that's just a... Uh, a paint scraper with a plastic broom handle uh, on the end. You got everything has to be uh, non-absorbent in the honey shed. So um, it took me a little while to find a plastic handle for that, but it threaded in there just fine. Frames are queued up. Uh, the efficiency of this system comes from being able to have the frames ready to roll before the extractor, while the extractor spins at previous load. As you can see, this is a Cowan 60 frame extractor. Not far from huge by lots of folks' standards, but uh, it's more than enough for us. And uh, while we're waiting for the next load to go through, I'll show you my, my lift here. This is something I faked up myself. Uh, a couple barn door tracks and a door hinge, I think I welded on the end of that. And uh, I have kind of a pivots uh, on the middle there so that those tracks can slide back and forth. The unit itself is a pneumatic lift from uh, Ingersoll. Works pretty good. It's called a balancer rather than a hoist for whatever reason <laughs> the, the uh, ergonomic experts have for do say in that. Um, and then it's pneumatically controlled in the handle. It'll lift a 60 pound box just like that. The uh, attachment on the end I made myself. Just uh, a couple angle irons and uh, some chain. And I think we're ready to. Oh, you can see it slide there. Works pretty good. That's uh, actually I built that in, and used it in my previous shed for about 20 years, and I'm I'm pretty happy with that setup. It was a, the track system that they wanted to sell me uh, was tens of thousands of dollars, and I faked up that uh, with some old barn door track, and it worked just fine. Okay, we're ready to load the extractor here. The gates are open, and this is uh, our first day of the year, so everyone's just a little bit. Uh, Kind of remind themselves how everything works, but I think we have this organized. The air a cylinder pushes the frames in. Usually, if it's tuned up just right, just a little extra pressure from the uh, the staff person that moves it forward. When you open the bridge, the the little tabs lock the frames in. Once everything's checked, they just spin it around, do the other side. 
there's a few safety mechanisms here so that uh, everything only things only work if uh, everything's in the right place. So we're just advancing the frames. 30 frames each side. Sometimes it's 29, sometimes it's 30. And those little ports Timmy's cleaning out, uh, that's a, let the honey through that sometimes tends to cluster on the ears. And every once in a while, probably once a day, it's useful to just get the wax out of there. I like this system because you can uh, you can hire on brains rather than brawn, and uh, boy, that's pretty handy because there's lots of smart kids out there, but they're not all six feet tall. And the honey in the bottom, you can see the steam too. Remember when I I did the steam video and I told you that lots of steam just goes straight out the extractor, and you can see now how that's the case. All right, we'll go around to the back side. Um, so there's the, this is the unloading station. I sort my frames as I go. So this year, all the plastic and anything dark uh, will be culled. Well, not really culled. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, sort these into brood chambers for next spring. I might even use some later uh, this summer to make some splits. And then all the nice white comb uh, is held back for honey supers. And you can see how uh, staff will typically grab two or three at a time. She's leaving that one because it's dark. So it's pretty easy to sort them there when they're right in front of you. Ten frames to a box. Here's my uh, empty box conveyor. It's just a roller uh, table on an angle. So the box just slides down there. And in case it runs too fast, I got a little spring loaded. A couple old uh, springs from uh, an, on capper. Once they get too tired, I just welded those in there and they. I cushion the box pretty nice. Here's my pump. I draw out of a very small sump with no baffles or anything, but just uh, just catches the honey out of both the uh, uh, from the uncapper side and the extractor side. Some of the wax floats to the top, and it all gets sucked into the pump. My, that uh, that sump is just tall enough so that uh, the honey can't overflow. The level of the top of that sump is higher than the maximum you could run the extractor at. If the honey got that high, the extractor would bog down with uh, honey hitting the bottom of the frames. So we don't have any overflows there. It's a total pipeline system. Nothing can spill, really. And here's my honey pump pushing the honey up to the heat exchanger. We can see the honey flowing. I'll just get There we go. A nice visual, some honey running up the pipe. I have a little screw press to all the scrapings and cappings and any wax. This is a new toy for me this year. You can see it squeezes the honey out and uh, uh, has a pretty, pretty much an onion ring. The kids were calling it this morning of the wax that comes out of it. And we're back at the end capper again. I have everything uh, fed from the ceiling so that the floor is easy to keep clean. Here's my uh, heat exchanger. That's just a bunch of tubes inside a big tube. Uh, just to warm the honey so it's nice, flows nice and even. And down the pipe into my spinner. This is a, a, a wax separator, I guess Cook and Beals calls it. That's a wonderful machine. And, uh, but pricey, whew.
but it's uh, it's been it's really once you if you have a good machine, uh, it makes cleaning your honey so nice. And uh, I'll flip the lid here. Look how clean and beautiful that is. Does uh, it does make the honey a little foamy, so you have to let it settle a bit in the tank. Otherwise, it's got uh, it'll have that kind of foam appearance on top. Float switch triggers the pump underneath. Here, here it is. I talked about pumps before, and that chases the pump, the honey up, and then down into the tanks. I have a small tank and a large tank. The small tank I can heat. And to keep the hoses separate, I have them marked. That red tape on that one hose pumps into the tank with the red tape on it. So hopefully we can keep that straight. On this tank, this is an old milk tank, and it has a uh, what would have been the cooling units. And uh, I've plumbed in kind of a heating system, a little under-the-counter uh, hot water heater. I put a 3,000-watt heater in and an old circulation pump. I round it up from somewhere, and that um, it, it warms the honey up pretty nice. Uh, those milk tanks, those refrigeration coils aren't really great for water systems because they have a lot of ups and downs to them, and getting them bled out so there's no vapor lock is tricky. But once you get it going, it's pretty good. So there's the whole system. Everyone's no, no one's working too hard. Everything's working good. That's the way I like it. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day.